He thought it was a Russian satellite at first. But at 19 years old, I was still curious. Actually, I went back in there, was out of curiosity to see if there was something that did land there. In the waning evening light, Weaver says that he and the others can barely make out the object below. It looked like it had plowed into the ground somewhat. Radiating off, I don't know if it was the front or the back or side, was a blue light, much like a welder's light. It gets real bright and then it gets dull. It would go back and forth. As Weaver and the others try to get a better look, he says officials move them further back, away from the woods. Around 6.30 p.m., Bill Bullybush returns to the scene, this time with his seven-year-old son, Ricky. I never seen so many people, and, and the Army was there. I couldn't figure out how the Army got there so quick. The Army kept everybody away. About an hour later, WHJB newsman John Murphy arrives on the scene. He sneaks into the woods and secretly takes a few photographs of the strange object. No more pictures. Accounts differ, but those close to Murphy believe some key photographs are confiscated by officials. He begins recording statements from a number of people. What you are about to hear are excerpts of the actual interviews Murphy conducted. Murphy calls in a bulletin to his colleague Stan Wall, WHJB's evening disc jockey. John Murphy. I'm out in the woods here outside of Kecksburg. It's bright and there's smoke every place. Okay, John, I'll give you, uh, you're going to be online in like 30 seconds, okay? John didn't like to go on the air if he wasn't certain with something. He, he didn't like to speculate. He gave us different opinions on what it could have been. As the evening went on, people really became anxious to find out what really happened. Then we had other radio stations and TV stations and so forth calling about this thing that had landed in Kecksburg. A growing military contingent continues to clear the area of onlookers as Murphy tries to collect more eyewitness accounts. About an hour and a half later, at 9 p.m., Bob Gatti, a 22-year-old reporter, arrives at the scene from the Greensburg paper, the Tribune Review. Along the road were state police, and there were some military people there, and I believe they were army people, and they had guns. They were keeping people from going back into this field. Robert Blystone is less than a quarter mile from his parents' home. From there, he sees a flurry of activity. A large flatbed truck, accompanied by army jeeps, disappears into the wooded valley. Almost two hours later, the convoy emerges, but Blystone notices that the flatbed is no longer empty and he sees what the military is trying to hide. And you can see on the flatbed a design under the uh, tarp, like a bell shape or a acorn shape vehicle that was under there. Robert Blystone isn't the only one who sees this strange cargo. By the next day, several eyewitnesses tell John Murphy, Bob Gaddy, and others that they saw a strange object in the sky that they believe came to Earth. The front page of our local paper, the Greensburg Tribune Review, had big headlines on Army Ropesloth area, unidentified flying object falls near Kecksburg. But another article in a later edition of the paper suggests that the eyewitnesses are mistaken. In that piece, state troopers say they have recovered, quote, absolutely nothing from the site. Stan Gordon is a local UFO researcher who has studied the Kecksburg case for nearly 40 years. He was 16 years old at the time of the incident. Gordon and others will challenge that conclusion for the next four decades. In 
In the days following the events of December 9th, local radio station WHJB's news director, John Murphy, gathers the eyewitness accounts he had recorded that night. The journalist is intrigued by the tapes which indicate that something fell into the woods outside Kecksburg. The following is an excerpt from Murphy's tapes. Do you want to describe the explosion? Well, I seen two big bright flashes and a long streak of orange light. I figured it was a plane. He decides to produce a documentary about that night. Murphy titles his project, Object in the Woods. John had me help him write up a story, and he wanted to make sure everything got in there included. And he was real excited. For several days, they work on the program. Murphy also listens to his interviews with local authorities. We checked in with the Pennsylvania State Police to find out how right an area this report had come in from. Oh, my. Uh, as far as Canada, in Ohio, it's been seen all over. Uh, these flashes have been coming all over the northeastern United States. But just a few days before Object in the Woods is set to air, two men identifying themselves to Mabel Mazza as government agents visit Murphy at the station. We wanted to let them talk privately, so we put them in the FM studio. So the men went in there with John and closed the door. Mabel says the meeting lasts about 30 minutes. For some reason, John Murphy was afraid. He just said, I can't talk about it. I cannot talk about it. And he said, just, just leave me alone. He sort of lost some of his spark. And I have no idea what it was, but it was after the visit of those two men. But the excitement in John was completely gone. And when I tried to question him on it, he didn't want to talk about it. Murphy moves ahead with plans to broadcast Object in the Woods. The show airs on WHJB in late December. But the documentary that listeners hear is not the one Murphy had intended. Object in the Woods. I say to him, I say, John, that's not what you said the other night. Well, he said, I, I have to change it. You know, I said, well, why do you have to change it? But he would never tell me. When it was aired, it was absolutely not the same documentary as it was prepared. At the beginning of the broadcast, Murphy advises his audience that his report has been edited. We regret that part of the program had to be censored and other parts of the program had to be cut out entirely. Despite his meeting just days before with the men who tell Mabel Mazza they were with the government, Murphy asserts that there has been no official pressure to alter his production. 